The events in Charleston on December 20, 1860 are well known to people in the United States, and school children as well as college students learn about the secession of South Carolina and its ties to slavery. However, few people realize that in both modern California as well as in what was at the time New Mexico Territory, the modern states of Arizona and New Mexico, secession conventions tried to take these two territories out of the United States, joining the emerging rebel government in Montgomery. In March 1861, the settlers in southern New Mexico, a region known as Arizona, decided to hold a secession convention. Instead of one meeting, there eventually were three at Pinos Altos in March of 1861, Misela on March 16, and the last one in Tucson on March 23rd. These conventions, just like their southeastern counterparts, were about voicing grievances against the U.S. government. Many of the delegates perceived their region's ties closer with the U.S. South, and not the nation as a whole. W. Cloud Jones thundered at the Pinos Altos Convention, so word a brilliant and glorious pathway of hope, leads to the Star of Empire, smiling over constellation of free and sovereign states. At all three secession conventions, the delegates voted to leave the United States and create the state of Arizona, or Arizona. Many of the residents in this desolate and arid region came from Texas and had long before 1861 demanded the creation of a separate territory. Many of the settlers, around 2,500 to 3,000, had put up roots in the Mesilla River Valley. Mesilla, as a town, was both strategically located and in a rich agricultural region. There were also a number of mining opportunities ranging from gold and silver to copper. Pinos Altos was a mining camp. Despite slavery being absent from the region, the ties to the south were strong, even without the institution of slavery. Among the grievances voiced, by the settlers, were the regions under representation in the territorial legislature and lack of protection and defense against Native Americans. The settlers felt vulnerable against the Apache, particularly the Chiricahua, whose lands they had stolen. In 1850, James Lucas tried to unsuccessfully get the territorial legislature to create a separate county for the region. The following year, they petitioned Congress with the same goal. There were increasing calls for the creation of Arizona Territory. It was not a new idea what was done in March 1861. Often overlooked in the ongoing fight over John Brown, the Red Scott decision, and similar Buchanan administration sectional crisis, was that people expected a repetition of bleeding Kansas in Arizona by 1858. By 1860, the region classified as Arizona had reached a population of 10,000, 
with the majority of the migrants coming from the southern slaveholding states. Nevertheless, the white population remained a minority, along the native Hispanic population, which was the majority. With the issue stalled, the white population decided in April 1860 to hold a territorial convention to draw a draft constitution for the territory. The 33 delegates avoided direct mention of slavery. For the most part, Southerners in the region made much noise, but produced little tangible action during the 1850s. Building on these attitudes, residents in southern New Mexico challenged the ties to the United States. Outside influences were also present, with Philemon T. Herbert, a former California congressman and El Paso lawyer. He was there on the behest of taxes to urge and organize the secession movement. At the conventions, dissent was absent, and voices against so-called black Republicans frequent. Even more, the issue of denied or not acted upon statehood requests were grievance voiced frequently. It's important to remember that with Arizona's secession, the state, quote-unquote, departed before Virginia, Arkansas, Tennessee, and North Carolina, the second wave of secession. With secession, the regional leaders sought to raise troops to defend their project and elect delegates to the Confederate Congress in Montgomery. Troops were needed. The U.S. Army forces stationed a mere six miles from Mesilla in Fort Fillmore kept a weary eye on the activities of these rebels. At the same time, the rebels saw the easy way out of state building by simply copying New Mexico's legal code, including its slave code. All these pretenses of being a separate state and aligning with the slaveholder rebellion came to an end with the defeat of Henry Sibley's invasion of New Mexico, which is the next episode in this series. It is, however, worth to remember that in New Mexico, a secession movement existed and created a pseudo-state of Arizona. The invasion of Sibley into New Mexico was supposed to extend the rebel foothold over the southwestern reach, which dismally failed. But before the last four states in the east that we all remember seceded, we had secession in the west something we need to remember and better integrate into the War of Rebellion story. Thank you for watching this episode of the War of the Rebellion channel. If you liked the material covered, please like and subscribe to the channel. Hit the notification bell for new episodes. If there's a story of the War of the Rebellion you would like covered, please leave a comment. Use the comments to engage in conversations. Thank you for patronizing the War of the Rebellion channel.